Hi everyone, this is Elizabeth Ann West with Sudorite, and I'm here to show you the brand new upgrade that our Canvas tool just got. So in addition to our free form brainstorming and storyboarding tool, we now have this great outline preset. So if you click this icon that says one, two, three, it will build for you a preset outline that we have based on the hero's journey. Now, not everybody writes fantasy. So one of the things that you can do is up here at the top where the drop down is, you can actually click that and see all four presets that we have available for you to build outlines for whatever your fiction project is. We have the hero's journey, which is great for any story where the main protagonist is gonna undergo a transformative change over the course of the story. We also have Hollywood Beats, which that focuses on a protagonist overcoming obstacles to achieve a goal and restore balance to a chaotic situation. We also have Story Circle. These are stories that have a universal theme and follow a circular narrative structure with a beginning, middle, and end that are all connected. And finally, we have the Romance Outline, which is great for stories that are focusing on the development of a relationship between characters as they face obstacles and challenges. Now, each one of these has some presets ready to go for you just so that you can try out how the tool should work. And they're all based on blockbusters or best-selling books that you might recognize. I'm going to go ahead and use Hollywood Beats, Customize, and I'm going to say a real estate, a real estate agent for monsters in Hollywood. Or we'll say Los Angeles. And that's all I'm going to say. And I'm going to call this, um, it's an urban fantasy book. I'm going to actually call it a comedic urban fantasy novel and generate the full outline. Now you can give a more specific prompt here. If you already know some of the things that you want to have happen in your story, maybe you know the characters' names, maybe you know what their story problem is, you can put that into the box here for the prompt. But the outline also works if you just have a vague inclination like I do, where I think it's hilarious imagining a real estate agent for monsters. Imagining like, do you put the vampires in an apartment building so that they always have victims? Or would a vampire want like a country estate somewhere and then they're just inviting people to parties and sometimes people just don't go home. I don't know, but the whole idea of it really makes me excited. All right, so that only took a little bit. So here we have Ambrose as the main character, a happy-go-lucky real estate agent for monsters in Los Angeles, California. He loves his job and loves to make monster clients feel welcome and at, their, and at home, regardless of their species. He's known for his quirky sense of humor and is well-respected in the monster community. The theme of the story is identity and belonging. Through Ambrose's journey, he will explore the importance of finding a place to feel like he truly belongs, while also learning how to accept himself and embrace his unique identity. Ambrose has been living in LA for the past five years, and he's made a great life for himself. He's comfortable with his job and loves the city, but deep down, he feels like there's something missing from his life. He's become so used to being the funny and reliable real estate agent, he started to forget what his goals used to be and what his true identity is. Ambrose's life is turned upside down when he meets a mysterious woman named Nadia. Nadia invites Ambrose to a secret gathering of monsters and tells him that he's the only one who can help them. Out of curiosity and a hint of adventure, Ambrose agrees to help her, not knowing what he's in for. Ambrose is torn between helping Nadia and his comfortable life as a real estate agent. He's worried about leaving behind the life he's created for himself in LA, but he's also excited about this new adventure and the chance to test his limits. After much deliberation, Ambrose decides to take a leap of faith and go on this journey with Nadia. So Ambrose sets off on his journey with Nadia, leaving behind his comfortable life in LA. He's excited and scared at the same time, but he's determined to take on this challenge and prove himself worthy of being a part of the monster community. I'm gonna move this card over just by clicking on it and moving it around. And I'm gonna bring this down just so I have a little bit more space. The arrows are connected to the card. So even if I move number seven all the way over here, those, um, those, uh, arrows will stick right onto it. And now I'm a little confused. I'll zoom out and find out where exactly I put card number seven. Oh, card number seven ended up way up there. So we'll bring it back down here. <laughs> Holding down my space cup bar, I can navigate all around the canvas and let me zoom back in. So we'll go back to Ambrose. He's left LA. Back in LA, Ambrose's friends notice his absence and start to worry. Ambrose's best friend, an outspoken werewolf named Mina, takes it upon herself to try to find Ambrose and figure out what's happened. She starts to investigate, trying to uncover the mystery behind Ambrose's sudden disappearance. Ambrose and Nadia embark on a wild journey filled with obstacles, enemies, and comedic moments. They must battle slimes and evil wizards, make their way through an enchanted forest, and even make a scary stop at the home of a powerful witch. 
Ambrose uses his wit and charm to get himself out of tricky situations, and his encounters help him learn more about the monster community and himself. I don't know if that card works, so, but we'll get back to that. The midpoint, they um, find a magical fountain and make a wish. To their surprise, their wish comes true, and they discover a powerful artifact hidden in the fountain's depths. With this artifact, they now have the chance to save the monster community and restore peace to the land. The villain, a powerful dark wizard named Malik, learns of the artifact in Ambrose's possession and sets out to get it. He sends his minions out to track down Ambrose and Nadia, um, determined to get the artifact and use it for its own evil, his own evil purposes. Ambrose and Nadia are captured by Malik's minions, and the artifact is now in the villain's possession. Um, so it looks like it got a little bit, it didn't quite fill this in and that's okay because I honestly think that we need more information here. So I think that this outline went a little bit off the rails at number seven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually delete by highlighting once and clicking delete one time. Make sure you click out of the card before you press the space bar or you'll actually remove the button that says fill me in. So we'll click out and we can delete these cards. And this is a good way to show like if the outline isn't what you want or you want to make changes. So I think right here, the idea that Nadia stole Ambrose is kind of put into part seven. And I like the idea of the friend Mina having to come after and face him. So we'll, we'll go here and I'm going to create, actually, I'm going to help get it back on track by filling in what I want to have happen. So Nadia, Nadia shows Ambrose three different monster only communities, but a, um, with lots of funny hijinks. Uh, and each time Ambrose nearly escapes with his life. He begins to suspect that maybe Nadia isn't who she says she is. Okay, so because I have given it some input, what's interesting is that from now on, when I click fill me in, what this is going to do is it's going to take into consideration every card that has already been generated and also every card that's been generated after it. So this is important if I actually know some other parts here. So um, for example, the bad guys close in, I'm gonna actually put and put here that the original meeting was not about saving the, uh, the original meeting that Nadia invited Ambrose to was not about saving the monster community. It was a front for a different uh, organization that wants monsters to be superior to humans again. Okay, so now that I have these two different plot points and I need something to happen in the middle, pseudo right can actually take that into consideration, helping it to keep the narrative logic. So now I'm gonna just go ahead and click fill me in and it should create a mid a pinpoint here that takes these things into consideration. Ambrose is overwhelmed as he discovers that Nadia is the leader of a secret organization that wants monsters to take over the world. See how it, it picked up that next card? After infiltrating one of the monster-only communities that Nadia had previously shown Ambrose, he finds out her sinister intentions is nearly captured. He finds out her sinister intentions and is nearly captured by her henchmen. He barely escapes with his life and has to figure out a way to put a stop to Nadia and her organization. So I'm gonna delete this card now and let it fill it itself in because I need Mina to come back into the story, the werewolf, maybe. Or I guess that would come into the, the later part here. So it rushes back to LA gathering allies from the monster community to help take on Nadia and the organization. This makes sense because the monsters in the LA community want to stay living among humans and safely. And now I can click fill me in and fill in the rest of the outline. Ambrose and his allies uh, with the candy factory in Chinatown. Oh my gosh, I'm imagining monsters with fur that get stuck with candy all in their fur. <laughs> this would be a very funny story. Then we have Dark Knight of the, Dark Knight of the Soul here. 
forced to retreat. Any questions? He feels defeated. So maybe maybe Mina gets taken hostage here or something like that, or maybe Nina, Mina doesn't make it. Um, the other thing that you can always do is you can generate options for a card. So if I generate options for a card, it's actually going to create three cards, uh, three card ideas here. And if I want to replace one, I can. So the failure, he's so wrapped up. Um, he finds himself back in the monster only cafe in the heart of LA. He meets a mysterious figure dressed in all black with a silver mask covering their face. This figure who Ambrose soon discovers is the ancient and powerful spirit of the monster community helps him understand the power of acceptance and the importance of embracing his true identity. With a newfound understanding, Ambrose takes one final stand against Nadia and her organization. I like it. So if I grab this card and to do that, I'll just click out of it so I can grab that card. I should be able to hover for a few seconds over this and now it will replace it. So let me back up a little bit so you can see drag and drop to swap. So if I do that, the information that was on the other card, if I want to keep it, just in case I might use it later, I could just set it off to the side here. And you can also use your scroll scroll wheel to scroll, scroll up and down. But I like that one. And then I don't need this one. So I just, if you highlight it, if it's got a purple highlight, you can just delete it. And there was one more and I'll delete that. So fill this in. Now I'm filling them in sequentially because I deleted them all and I want it to keep the narrative logic. I want it to take into consideration what I had previously in, in the uh, outline there. So rallies, they're infiltrating. Mean, with the help of Mina and her werewolf pack. Yay, Mina rides again. Ambrose and his allies mount a daring assault on the abandoned candy factory, determined to put an end to Nadia's reign of terror. And they storm it. And they've got the power of the monster community behind them, ultimately defeating Nadi and her henchmen. Henchmen with the organization disbanded. Ambrose can now focus on discovering his true identity, um, embracing it. Maybe Ambrose is a secret monster too. He thought he was human this whole time, but he's actually a monster. And then now we are back with a peaceful LA and Ambrose is back realizing that whatever the future lies in store, it's a truly monstrous one. Oh, this is such a cute story. So such a cute story. And we'll come over here. If I want to keep it, and I totally do, I'm going to click these three dots right here, and I'm going to copy the entire outline to the clipboard. If I come back to my project, everything's in that canvas. And now I just right click and I can um, paste it all in. And there is my entire story and I'm ready to go. And I'll rename this outline and I'll call this Monster Real Estate. I hope you have fun with the new canvas uh, feature, especially the outline. The outline's always there. If you ever decide you want to do a different outline, you can just click on the card and you can press delete and it'll delete the entire outline. That is permanent. Um, I'm actually okay to do that because I've already copied and pasted it into my documents, but uh, I could get started with another outline basically. So have fun and happy outlining.